This tile had a nice she oak underneath it like a few months back. Oh, no way! <laughs> Sixteen degrees and raining, and it's like perfect conditions for white lips and copperheads. We've got to the spot, this nice wetland. We're just going to walk around the pond for a bit in this long grass and see if we can turn up anything cool. I thought that was a snake. <laughs> I might have to put the camera away in a sec because it's... <sighs> Camera's getting wet. In situ white lip snake. 15 degrees and raining. It's cold as. And you can see how wet he is. He's just sitting out here out in the rain. 10 minutes and we've got a white lip snake. 15 degrees and raining. And you wouldn't think that you're going to get snakes active in these conditions. But white lip snakes and copperheads absolutely love the cold weather. I've seen a handful of them down here in 12 degrees and rain. These are one of the most cold tolerant snakes in the country. They're found like right down in the southeastern corner of Australia in southern New South Wales, southern Victoria and um, Tasmania. But they don't need much heat to get warm at all. They're a live bearing species. They feed predominantly on skinks. They're, they're pretty variable as well. This is a dark brownish sort of colored one. You can see some cool golden colored ones. There's really nice red ones down here too. I have only seen two, but yeah, they've all got that trademark white lip on their, on their face that goes down onto their neck as well. And they're not a very big elapid either. They're, that's a gravid female. And yeah, that's, that's how big she is. They're also one of three species in their genus, Drysdalia. Um, around the Sydney region, you only get two of those the driest daily, the mustard belly and the white lip snake and then down in southern south australia you get the other species which is the master's snake we've got more white lips and some copperheads to find so we're going to let this girl go and keep moving how good nice bit of grassy habitat this is exactly what you want when looking for white lips and copperheads these just random patches of dead grass is just what they curl up in curl up on on these cold days and they just froth it Highlands, Copperhead, sick, good spot. Walking back to the car after that white lip to quickly grab a feed, and we saw one Copperhead basking in the grass, went over to him, and just next to him was a second Copperhead. This is quite a nice looking one as well. This is the Highlands Copperhead, or Australaps Ramsey-Eye. And yeah, this is the other species of venomous snake that is just they live sympatrically with the white lips they're really common pretty much everywhere that you get white lips and they're another very variable species you get yellow copperheads you get black you get brown red like i'll throw in some photos i've taken of some highlands copperheads and you can get an idea for how variable they are but they're such a sick snake and yeah again sitting out in the rain 15 degrees and they're just out here living life to the fullest um, it just doesn't make sense. It's such a spin out, spin out, seeing cold-blooded reptiles out in freezing cold conditions. It just does not make sense. But copperheads are one of the sickest snakes. They literally never get old. They can get to over a meter long, but generally this is the average size, which is about two and a half, three foot. Um, but yeah, these are another super common snake in the southeastern parts of Australia in the high altitudes. Hence the name Highlands Copperhead. Unlike the white lips that feed on skinks, these guys mostly feed on frogs. And you saw the wetland that we pulled up to, which is why he's been hanging around, because of all the frogs. But they will eat skinks and other things, but yeah, generally they're frog specialists. Look at the head. They have such a nice looking face. Oh my God, I love copperheads. They're so mad. You can find them so close to suburbia. They're like the Eastern Browns that you saw in one of the other videos that I did recently. Like, you do not have to go far from civilization to find copperheads. And they're just a secretive snake. Like, they don't really, they're, they're a shy snake. They don't really have much to do with people. They, they love to avoid people where they can. But then again, they still get that shit reputation about being aggressive and all that bullshit. But they're not. They're always calm. They're the calmest snakes. Like, I could kiss this one probably. Actually, I might. I'll be back.
All right, and here's a look at that other copper head that was right next to this one we just had, and you can see how much darker it is. This is sort of a typical sort of colored copper head. They're dark, they've got those obvious white flanks. And yeah, it's real dark, like you, yeah, this is the typical color. But if you, like it sort of looks like a white lip almost. Like it doesn't, but it also does. I don't know if that makes sense, it kind of does to me. Copperhead number two for the day, the same size as the other one. Presumably both gravid females out making the most of this weather today. I've been seeing so many gravid snakes lately. Three years ago today, I came to this spot and I saw 16 white lips, nine copperheads, and I think 10 blue tongues. Still got some rubbish, some tin and some boards and tiles and shit that we can go flip in a sec, but I'm just going for another walk because I didn't get to photograph that white lip. So I'm hoping we can get another white lip so that I can photograph one. Nice. I guess this is just me now. Gotta be something underneath this. Slugs. You're kidding me. Oh, sick. This is actually the nicest she oak skink I think I've ever seen. It doesn't really come through well on the camera, but it's like this sick orangish red color and it's got like a glowing orange belly. It is such a nice looking one. She's heavily gravid though, so we are not gonna spend long with her at all. It's kind of a shame because I really want to photograph one that looks this nice, but it's more important that she goes back under that tile. So we're going to quickly put it back, but what a sick looking chic. It's, it's quite a big one too. Look at the size comparison. That's a good size chic. Original tail. Other tile, what have we got under here? Uh, this tile had a nice she oak underneath it like a few months back. Oh, no way. <laughs> That's fucking sick! <laughs> oh! So, copperhead number three for the day under that tile. That's sick! I've never flipped a snake under these tiles before. Typical colour form, the real dark black on top. They are such a good snake and I'm actually stoked that the tiles are producing, but we're gonna leave this one be because we've got some good videos of the other ones today. But that is so awesome. Three tiles and we've got two sick herps. How good is that? Lifted this, I didn't record it because I didn't think there was going to be anything under it and oh I was like, God. there's a white lip. I joked there's a white lip. Lifted it up, there's another copperhead. That is sick. Copperhead number four <laughs> for the day. That's a clean looking copperhead. Oh my God. That is sick. That's a really nice looking little copperhead. So that's copperhead number four. And yeah, we're going to keep going, but how yeah. sick is that? Just quickly come to a different spot to check this piece of tin because sometimes it produces. And then, oh my god, there's another copperhead and a blue tongue. Alright, so bluey and a copperhead. That's cool. Copperhead number five for the day. One random piece of tin at the next spots produced two cool finds, another new reptile for the day. Eastern blue tongue, an iconic Australian species. This is a big female, she's gravid like the rest of the reptiles we've been finding today. Awesome lizard, they never get old. They're common in the backyards throughout most of Australia, which is why they're so iconic. And you can see that big blue tongue, which is where they get their name. They're a mad snake, but there's, so, I mean, they're a mad lizard. But there's so many snails here, they just love it. And she's gone. We're going to leave her be and go to the next spot because we've got some more tiles to check. Big bluey sitting out in the rain. Oh, what a mad dog. Eastern blue tongue, Teliquus quinquidies. And they're good to see. I like them quite a lot. We're going to leave this bloke be. Oh, he's going to sort himself out. Oh, yeah, skin, shoot me out. Gravid. Alright, the board. I'll do the board. I've had copper heads under that board before. Um, tile here. I want another she oak. Go on, your one. Well, you got the good touch with all the she oaks. Let's see, go flip this one. Let's see if you've got the touch for if it's. Oh no, you suck. Here's one. There's got to be something under this one. There's nothing underneath this one. Oh, cross. Nothing. That's surprising. Oh, a little oh. copperhead. There, some nice coppery colour. Yeah, small little sub-adult copperhead. And yeah, it's not a very good size, you can see. Like, that's me shoe. How good are the shoes as well? Um, yeah, cranky little copperhead. Got a little bit of different colour on the sides, but thought it was worth a little look. Copperhead number six for the day. 
and it could be the last find of the day. He's going back underneath the tile. Julia Sheik. Yeah. No. Last piece for the day. Oh, big shio. This is going to be the last reptile of the day, but it's a pretty good one to finish on. It's probably going to be the last reptile of 2023, because it's New Year's Eve today. But a cracker little shio, another gravid female, and another good size one. She's very fairly sized. Such sick lizards. What a legend. Look at the tongue flick. That is so sick. What a mad lizard. It's a bit late now, so we're going to have to head off, but yeah, that's going to be the last reptile for the day. It's been a sick day. We've seen two she-oaks, two cracking she-oaks, six copperheads, a white lip, and two blue tongues.